established.
my kako, aloha. I'm Kau Kelekona Bisha and I am here, resident of this side of the island. I want you to look straight ahead first before I do my puli and blessing. In front of us, you see the three, what we call the three guardians. To the left, the mountain that is shrouded in the clouds right now, the highest peak on the Ko'olaus, Punahu Nui. Next to that peak is Lanihuli. And to the right of that is Kiahi Akohoi. So this is a fitting place for us to see a change of command from leadership. And so we ask for Kiakua's blessing on this time. So Hepule Kako, which means let us pray together. Mahalo no mako he aku no kolonae. No kamea o keakua kili kahunua. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather beneath you, the God that created the heavens and the earth. And we are here in this beautiful place, Hawaii, to ask for your blessing as a torch, the same torch that was passed to King Kalakaua from his ancestors, Ivi Kawikawa, the torch that continues to burn during the day of leadership to guide and direct the Marine Corps here in Hawaii. And so we ask for your blessing upon all that have come and all that have gone, gone. We ask also for your blessing upon those that are here, for Lieutenant General William N. Journey. He has touched all of our lives in these islands and throughout the Pacific. And we, the people of this great state and great nation, are a lot better for it. Guide him as he has guided those who has given, he has been given to charge these past years. And as he hands the leadership towards to General James Eaglin, we ask that you keep your hands of grace upon him as he heads out to his new station, to where you have called him to serve. And may he continue to lead as King David led, with integrity of heart and skillful hands. With our new commander, Lieutenant General James F. Glenn, will you continue to bless him as well as he come among us, he and his family, and he re receives that leadership torch and assumes command. Bless him with the wisdom of Solomon in the decisions that he has to make in these uncertain times. Fill him with the courage of David, who when faced with giants in the land overcame. Empower him with the strength of Samson to lead and overcome the enemies of freedom. Bless him with the patience of Job to deal with the ever-changing demands placed upon him and the compassion to care for the men and women he leads. And a blessing also to all those, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific and Fleet Marine Forces Pacific, as well as all of the people who have joined in to help and serve. Your strength enables all of us to protect others. Your providence keeps us safe and helps us to turn our hearts towards you and in every day. In the name of the Creator, the Savior, and the Sustainer, may the life of the land continue to be washed in righteousness. Amen. In the final battle, pivotal battle that brought Oahu under the control of Kamehameha, he is told to speak to his warriors. Imua ina poki, inu ikai ava ava, which means continue to go forward, my brothers. You have to drink sometimes of the bitter waters. There is no turning back. There is no retreat. Mahalo, mahalo kiakua, and mahalo to all of you. Aloha. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Present-day parades in the Marine Corps have their basis in both history and tradition. The massed formation of troops on one long line at close interval made possible the massing of firepower from muzzle-loaded muskets of the past. The, the adjutant forms the line of battle, and in those early days, that line consisted of two or three ranks, much like in the parade you will see today.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of colors and remain standing for Hawaii Ponoe.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank 
Now taking his place in the reviewing area is General Eric M. Smith, the 39th Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Eric M. Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to the commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral Samuel Paparo.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to the commander, U.S. Marine Corps Forces Pacific, Lieutenant General William M. Journey. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Now taking his position is Lieutenant General James F. Glenn. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the ceremony's most solemn moment, the actual passing of command. The battle colors of a Marine Corps unit symbolize the authority and accountability of command. Transferring the colors during the ceremony symbolizes the relinquishing of command by Lieutenant General Journey. And by accepting the colors, Lieutenant General Glenn accepts command and confirms his total commitment to the Marines and sailors that he will command. Sergeant Major Cook, the Sergeant Major for United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific, is delivering the colors to the commander. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated. Attention to orders from Commandant of the Marine Corps to Lieutenant General William M. Journey. Effective 0930, 12 September 2024. You will stand relieved as the Commander, United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Lieutenant General James F. Glenn. Effective 0931, 12 September 2024. You will assume the duties of the Commander, United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to the commander, United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific, Lieutenant General James F. Glynn. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats for the duration of remarks and presentations. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral Samuel Paparo. Ura, good morning and aloha. Great to see my dear friend, the Commandant of the Marine Corps, uh, General Eric Smith. Great to see the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps this morning and great to see all of our honored guests. Today is indeed a joyful, a solemn, and a profound day. And I'd like to begin with a bit of front matter and honor a Marine family. So for Sue, for Madison, for Troy, and for Cassie, through 37 years, 22 PCS moves, three high schools each, uh, you have served. You have served the nation uh, through worry, your resiliency, your toughness, uh, every bit as much as anybody here, you've served the nation and the nation owes you a profound thank you. So from each and every one of you, uh, we honor you today. The nation honors your service, mahalo. I speak to you today as an admirer of the United States Marine Corps, as the son of a U.S. Marine, and as a sailor. And the story of the Marine Corps is a story of honor, courage, and commitment. But it's also the story of innovation, adaptation, and dynamism. And for these times, this is important. We're living in a dangerous time. And for the Marine Corps, from its history, from its early days and its founding at Tun Tavern in November of 1775, at first, riflemen in the rigging and raiding parties, through its distinction in the 19th century in the savage wars of peace, from the devil dogs and distinction in Bella Wood, and the genius and the brilliance innovation of General John Lejeune in foreseeing amphibious warfare for the Second World War. And now, in these times, in seeing the requirements of today's environment in the Indo-Pacific and the requirements of change, the Marine Corps answers the call with the timelessness of honor, courage, and commitment, but with the dynamism of innovation, adaptation, and dynamism. And for Bill Journey, he has absolutely typified this in his service, in implementing force design while maintaining those eternal elements that are so timeless for the Marine Corps. The elements of crisis response, of honor, courage, commitment, the basic skill sets of shoot, move, communicate, of the basics of being a Marine. But the art, the science, the innovation of bringing what we must bring to the fight for the realities of warfare in the 21st century. 
And he's brought it through the prism of that, which is uniquely Bill Journey. And that which is uniquely Bill Journey is an absolutely brilliant mind, but it comes through the prism of the most incredible humility. Through rock iron marine discipline, but it also comes from a human empathy that comes from a giant heart. In other words, Bill Journey combines the timelessness of honor, courage, and commitment with the innovation, adaptation, and the dynamism of a U.S. Marine. Maybe the greatest thing that anybody could ever say of anybody is that Bill Journey is and always will be a good Marine. Bill, on a personal note, you and I have been friends and mentors to each other. Uh, through difficult times, we've been, we have counseled each other as peers, as equals. Many a Marine General and Navy Admiral have served on this island, but none closer and none more trusting. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you, and our friendship will endure through the years. I was talking to Maureen this morning, and we were talking about um, your future, you know, which I know. I have guilty in your future. And so I told her about it, and she said to me, who doesn't love a Marine general? <laughs> when I told her about it. And uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's the iron truth. And Sue, uh, Maureen and I were talking about you a little bit, too. And I think your calling card will always be empathy and grace. And we're going to miss you both so much. And uh, so for General Jim Glenn, the universe has a particular design. And each of us is a leader for our time. And for Jim and Denise, you were chosen for this time. Your background as a special operations Marine, your combat experience, everything that brought you to this day before has brought, has, has brought you to this moment to carry on the work of Bill, but also to bring it through the prism of what makes you special and what makes you ready to lead. Please lead through the prism of your heart and your head. And you are joining on this island a team like no other. Nowhere on the joint force do you have this kind of symmetry on this magnificent island guarded by these three guardians that you see back behind me. So in General Charlie Flynn and General Kevin Schneider and Admiral Steve Kaler and Admiral J.W. Williams, we have the synergy and the teamwork on this island along with our senior enlisted leaders to have teamwork, to have synergy, and to tackle the problems of the 21st century with innovation, with adaptation, and with dynamism for the problems of our time. Welcome aboard, Jim and Denise. Bill and, and Sue, fair winds, following seas, but I'll talk to you later. Ladies and gentlemen, mahalo. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Eric M. Smith. Okay, there we go. All right, we've overcome technical challenges. For everyone who's here, thank you. You matter. From Gumby to Webb, Pappy, Jim, Bill, everyone who's here, you're here for a reason. You're here to support Bill Journey and Sue and their children 
as they go over the side after a spectacular career and to welcome aboard Jim and Denise as they assume the mantle of command. The Marines that you see behind me represent just a fraction of Fleet Marine Forces Pacific. They represent just a small piece of what the Marine Corps brings to the fight. And it is all about the fight. It's all about preventing the fight. But we all know that that's probably not likely. But there's a fight coming. And our job is to be ready for that fight. Our job is to be ready to fight and win and return home with our honor clean as Marines have done throughout the decades. So what I would offer to you is that these Marines that you see standing behind me in formation are deserving of a round of applause from you as they represent just a small sliver of what is FMF PAC. So a round of applause, please. You, you don't get here by happenstance. You get here by determination, by hard work, and by commitment to your profession. As Lou Craparata knows, former FMF PAC commander, and Lou, it's good to see you. you. You don't get here on accident. You're hand selected to come here based on your integrity, your vision, and your warfighting expertise. And for a guy who used to lean in on pitches to make it to first base, playing for NC State, Bill Journey, um, you know, that's, that's Bill's claim to fame when he was a catcher. He couldn't hit very well. He could catch pretty well. But he used to lean in to get hit, get on base. And he had a pretty, pretty high on-base percentage because of that. That's a true story. So shared with very few people. But that's a, that's a true story. So Bill, the cat's out of the bag. But you don't get here by happenstance. You get here through a career of dedication and innovation and commitment and professionalism. And all those words that I've just used roll off your tongue when you're talking about Bill Journey. And Bill and Sue are a team. I mean, Sue is the secret sauce that keeps that relationship going, trust me. She is, she is up here, you know, and she brings Bill along with her. And you can't replace a Bill Journey. But if you're gonna, you do it with Jim Glenn and Denise. Because I've known Jim just about as long as I've known Bill. And he and Denise are the complete deal. They're the complete package. They will bring a vision, they'll bring an intensity, and they'll bring a compassion for this command that can't be matched. Because we know who you are, Jim. You know who you are, Denise, and you're the perfect replacement if you can replace a Bill and Sue journey, which you can't, but we're gonna. So that's just the way the Marine Corps works. And as soon as I'm off the stage, Jim Glenn is the commander of Fleet Marine Forces Pacific, and the Marines behind me will salute him and they'll execute his orders. And that's how the machine rolls on. That's how it works. And to all of our distinguished guests who are here to honor Bill Journey and to welcome Jim Glenn, thank you. Because you do do us a great honor by being here. You do. You know, again, from Gumby to Pappy to all the retired general officers who are here, the active duty general officers, the delegates, the distinguished foreign visitors, this is a team sport. It's a team effort out here, and it is all about FMF PAC, as far as I'm concerned, in the support of Commander Indo-PACOM. So again, for Bill Journey, all I can say, brother, is hell of a ride. Hell of a ride. And for Jim and Denise, buckle up, because it's going to be a hell of a ride for you, too. So fair winds following seas, Bill. Sue and your family, and welcome aboard the Jim and Denise. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen,
The Commandant of the Marine Corps is being joined in the reviewing area by the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Carlos Ruiz, Lieutenant General Journey, and Mrs. Journey. Certificate of Retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America. To all who shall see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that Lieutenant General William M. Journey, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Marine Corps. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, U.S. Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Department of the Navy, Certificate of Award, in appreciation of meritorious public service to the Department of the Navy. The Commandant of the Marine Corps takes pleasure in presenting the Meritorious Public Service Award to Mrs. Sue Journey for service set forth in the following. For meritorious public service to the United States Marine Corps through a succession of extraordinary contributions and tireless support to personnel assigned to United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific from September 2022 to September 2024. Mrs. Journey's advocacy and selfless volunteer acts proved invaluable to service members and their families in the Indo-Pacific region. Displaying enduring dedication, she represented the nation and command at official and social functions, sharing ideas that fostered goodwill among citizens and improved local and military communities. Mrs. Journey's outstanding accomplishments reflected great credit upon her and upheld the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. Eric M. Smith, General, U.S. Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General William M. Journey, United States Marine Corps, retired. Sir, the mic is ready, sir. All right. All right. Hey, before we start here, Marines, uh, I know you're at rest. Uh, I'm going to tell you, just shake it out right now. That's an order. That's the last order I'm going to give, all right? So you go ahead. I know you're standing there, Mod Pride. Tell them, sorry, mate, say out. Shake it out just a minute here, all right? I need 10 minutes from you, all right? I know it's hot out there, and we all appreciate it. Hoorah. Hey, look, uh, first off, Commandant, thank you. And thank you, Admiral Faro, for your kind words. Uh, it means a great deal coming from both of you, I got to tell you. Um, let me tell you just a little bit about why it means a lot from both of these individuals for me. You know, I, uh, I first crossed paths here with uh, General Smith uh, as a new battalion commander in combat operations in Iraq. He, uh, he was a West Coast guy, and, uh, and I was kind of an East Coast guy, but uh, combat operations in Iraq, um, you know, and that war brought us together. Early in the fight, and as many of you will appreciate, you know, I, uh, I suffered my first KIA and I was back at the headquarters late, uh, late into the night when the phone rings in the COC. And they tell me that it's uh, Lieutenant Colonel Smith, uh, this adjacent uh, battalion commander. Then Lieutenant Colonel Smith proceeds to tell me that he knows exactly where I'm at and what I'm going through and feeling. And I'm replaying every move and decision and the pain of such tragic loss that I know many of you understand and appreciate. Uh, but he's telling me that because he's already been there as he had deployed in advance of me. And he just wanted to reach out and tell me to hang in there and that me and my Marines and their families were in his thoughts and in his prayers. And he was the first person to reach out to me 
And I remember that moment vividly. We pressed on with the fight, as we do. Um, but I have never forgotten uh, that call or your friendship these last 20 plus years. And you can better believe uh, I've always had your back ever since, Commandant. You know, let me tell you, tell you folks a little bit about here for, uh, for Admiral Paro, as I said, thank you. Um, and he knows because we've talked about this, but there is no four star more operationally and war fighting grounded than our Pappy. Um, period. Whether you're in a dog fight or a firefight, uh, he's bringing his A game, and I've seen it. I believe that we all, we all need to be inspired and we need to be led. Uh, whether you're six years old or you're 60. And he brings that with his A-game. As he said, as his FMF commander, as his fellow component commander, as his deputy, and now as one of his subordinate commanders here in Indo-PACOM, it has been the highlight of my last tour to be pushed and inspired and led operationally and professionally in a way, uh, in a way that we all could only hope for. Many of you know I'm the guy who says uh, you're either getting better or you're getting worse, uh, and there's no staying the same. And the Marine Corps didn't teach me that. That'd be my college baseball coach, Gary Robinson, as he was laying in us pretty hard. Uh, because you can't stay the same, because I submit to you that if you think you're staying the same, our adversaries are working harder than us, and by default, you are, in fact, getting worse. Trust me when I tell you there is absolutely no just staying the same. And there is no getting worse either on Admiral Paparo's watch. And for me, I am forever grateful in leaving Marfort back and leaving the Corps today with a feeling of pride and pushing hard every day, planning, executing ops, which is where I've spent almost all my career uh, in the field and in the fight. So going out with my boots on, as I would say, is exactly where I want it to be and how I wanted it. So, sir, thank you. Thank you for leading and inspiring us both personally and professionally and what you bring uh, to the fight across the joint force each and every day. I got to tell you, as I look across uh, the formation uh, here behind me uh, and the crowd today, you know, it's a, it's, it's a bit overwhelming, I'll be honest with you. And, and so to say simply thank you uh, is an understatement for taking the time and for many of you who have traveled a long way, um, Probably traveled a long way just to make sure I didn't forget to let go of the stick out here just a while ago, but uh, but I did, and it's in great hands, um, without a doubt. But for all of you, my sincerest uh, thank you for honoring us, for honoring us with your presence today. And an amazing day it is, uh, but even more so as you look uh, at all these great-looking Marines uh, standing behind me here in the band, and also recognizing all those who have worked so hard over the last several weeks to bring the ceremony together from project officers, the protocol, the base, our drill masters. And there ain't no party like the working party, right? And so, you know, coming from a former Lance Corporal myself, I certainly thank and appreciate all those hard chargers behind the scenes that were actually doing all the work. So I, too, would ask you to join me in a big round of applause for all these hard charging Marines behind me. Hoorah. Thank you, Marines. As was alluded to, the Marines and sailors standing in front of you today, they represent, you know, two Marine Expeditionary Forces, both one and three MEF, and our headquarters. Uh, the MEFs and MAR-4 PAC represent approximately two-thirds of the entire United States Marines combat power. And every day, over 80,000 Marines and sailors make sacrifices for our country. And we do not forget them or their service. We also recognize and appreciate their families and their sacrifice in putting up with the demands of the Marine Corps. They train and operate from California and Arizona to Japan, Korea, Philippines, Australia, and I got to tell you all places in between in the Indo Pacific Theater. Today, they're in over 32 locations, 10 countries, two territories, embarked aboard amphibious vessels, Coast Guard and U.S. Naval ships, and make no mistake, they are keeping the main thing the main thing. And they stand ready to fight and to fight and win on behalf of our nation and on behalf of our nation's commitments to our allies and to our partners. I can't thank both past and present mar 4 pack staff and all our leaders from across our headquarters and our formations 
for their dedication and drive and delivering results. Results in what we call our campaign of doing. Because we ain't real big on studying and talking about something. As they have turned concepts into reality and execution as our Corps' premier operational force. Our capabilities and readiness, our capabilities and readiness are possible because of our strong partnerships and our strong alliances. Working alongside our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines from across the Indo-Pacific, I would like to personally thank those nations and militaries, but especially the representatives of many of those nations and militaries who are here with us today. I also want to thank my fellow component commanders. It's a great team, and I am absolutely honored to have served with all of you each and every day. As well, I want to thank Colonel Bevan uh, and the Marine Corps Base Hawaii here and our local community here today. Uh, before they have done in supporting the mission and our families. I mean, we all recognize what a special place this is, and we call it home. You know, so I'll tell you, I was, uh, I was fortunate enough uh, to have worked for a Marine. You know, this guy named General Dumford one time, you know, he seemed to do pretty well at this business. Um, having served as ISAF commander, as commandant, uh, as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and, you know, and he told me, and then I talked to my staff about this other day, he said, he said, Bill, you know, there's really two things that you got to get absolutely right and essential in this business if you want to be successful. So, of course, I'm ready to copy, you know, when I'm a colonel. He said, the first is you got to work hard at seeking out and surrounding yourself with the absolute best people you can find because it's all about the people. I asked him what the second thing was, and he said, I don't know, because if you get the first one right, the second one don't even matter, right? And I got to tell you, I've absolutely been blessed over the last three-plus decades to have had some of the finest leaders and mentors and warfighters to serve alongside. They have taken care of me in every climate place. From the early days in 2-4 with a, with a guy named Captain Steve Davis, who is uh, listening online, and, and I got to give him a footnote credit. He's the originator of keeping the main thing the main thing. You know, from Steve Davis to linebacker six and the, and the perpetual coach LaFavor uh, that we know here in Indo-PACOM, but uh, Bill Journey knows him as, as a battalion commander and linebacker six uh, of 3-8, of uh, who taught us all what right looked like, um, and many of whom are here with us today, from Dale Alford, Bill Sablon, uh, Drew Warren, and even Big Al Mendonca. Uh, back from our uh, big 38 days. And made no mistake with the uh, two back-to-back -back combat deployments with 1-6 hard uh, from Fallujah to Ramadi um, will always be where my heart and where my head remains, even after 20-plus years. It seems like yesterday to me, as I know it does to many of you. Uh, you know, now I see my former lieutenants. They, you know, at this age, they ain't lieutenants anymore. They're, they're regimental and commanding muse. You know, my lance corporals are master guns and sergeant majors today. Uh, but I remain proud of each and every one uh, in and out of uniform with a special bond uh, that will endure forever. And after 11 plus deployments, and always first on my team list uh, are my partners, uh, Dale and Sparky Renforth, who have always been at the ready, whether we were in the business of making Marines or winning battles, and you can bet um, we were looking to lead the charge on both of those fronts, and in most cases we did. You know, we talked about Sue, and most of you came to see her, not me today anyway, and I understand that. That's okay. I get it. I've, I've come to grips with that a long time ago. Uh, you know, my wife was, uh, she was 18 years old, and she was my girlfriend when she dropped me off at the bus stop to go to Paris Island, South Carolina, become Marine. Um, when I got back, I said, uh, you know, as a newly minted Marine, you know, I, I told her, and some of you heard this story, I said, marry me, honey, and you will see the world. Silver tongue devil, right? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, 30 plus years, 22 moves, as alluded to, and about 16 of those years at wonderful, magnificent Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, most of which I was gone. Uh, I did finally get her uh, out of the AO there and over to the Pacific uh, to see the world um, from 3rd Marine Division in Japan. And uh, now, as you can see, we have uh, taken one for the team here on this hardship tour uh, in Hawaii. Um, so she reminds me quite often that, uh, that I've been a very slow return on her investment, uh, but I remind her that it looks like uh, it did finally pay off, right? So uh, 
We love it every minute of our time with so many great people and Marines and families. Uh, we have shared time with folks uh, from Okinawa to our hilltop uh, extended family uh, Marines right here in Marine Corps Base Hawaii. It has indeed uh, been a blessing. You know, at this point, uh, our son Troy and daughter Madison, uh, they ain't kids no more. Um, and we are fortunate to have uh, recently added a daughter-in-law, uh, Cassie, uh, to the Journey family in July. And Sue and I cannot be prouder, couldn't be prouder of them all. Despite the challenges of uh, moving around as military brats, as, as all of you well know, they have uh, been very successful. In the case of uh, Troy and Madison, I will also say that the apple don't fall far from the tree, as they have followed a similar path as me. Um, there's really only been two things that I've ever done in life that was uh, uh, meaningful that I attempted to do, and one was play baseball, and the other was to be a Marine. Uh, my son Troy went to the baseball route. Uh, he works for Major League Baseball and the Padres, uh, while my daughter, uh, Madison, has joined the team and uh, now continues to serve as a civilian Marine right here at Marine Corps Base Hawaii. So they follow their own passions in life, both of which I just happen to understand and admire. And with this transition to retirement, I look forward to spending a lot of time um, with them uh, now that they likely don't uh, care to have me camping out in their living room. Uh, too bad I'm coming to visit uh, for long-term stays, as you might imagine. But guys, I love you, uh, and thank you for all that you have put up with over the years. Most of you have endured the uh, journeyisms over the years. Uh, one that is likely familiar is about the fundamental principle of always having at least two ways to win. Three is even better. As I was departing uh, Caltrap 6 and uh, Third Mar Div, my gunner, the one and only Caltrap gunner, Gunner Law, I hope he's listening, he told me that, hey, sir, you know what? I know what your second way to win is now. It's Sue. Needless to say, he was correct. Uh, Sue has always been my way to win, uh, but where I needed to correct him was that Sue has and will continue to be my first way to win, not my second. Honey, it's been a long coming here, and, uh, and I hope to make up uh, for some of the lost time. Your, your service is, is referenced already, and the impact you have made is indeed the real secret sauce um, to Team Journey, without question. The Marine Corps needed and wanted you as much or more than they ever needed me. And all here know the return on investment and the outsized impact you have had everywhere you go and with every person you have touched. Thank you for always being my first way to win. I love you. you right. For Denise and Jim, we've known each other for many years. We've covered a lot of ground, without a doubt. I know our Pacific Marines are in great hands. Sue and I wish you the absolute best uh, going forward and continued friendship with both of you. You know, also know I completed the most essential turnover item, linking you up with the best golf coach on the island and Leland, who's here. Uh, so tee it up, go long this command tour, as I got no doubt that you will. So ladies and gentlemen, um, there's no goodbyes today. Uh, I'm not going away. I ain't done yet. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm still accelerating, as you might expect. Uh, once a Marine, always a Marine, is not a bumper sticker. It's a way of life. It's one I'm proud to be a part of. It's one that was passed on to me by my father as a proud Marine. Trust I remain on plan, and I'm still in the fight. It's been an honor to serve alongside all, and I will cherish the friendship shared. As I have always said, you can make a difference in this world and have fun too. It is possible. And I plan on continuing to prove it each and every day going forward. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Semper Fidelis, and God bless. Hoorah. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander, U.S. Marine Corps Forces Pacific, Lieutenant General James F. Glenn. All right. All right, Marines, hang with me. We're done. Uh, very, very quickly. I, I want to. I want to.
want to just some acknowledgments right up front. There's been many thanks, many acknowledgments, but I want to say to the Commandant and Admiral Paparo, A, thank you for your words. We, we know what brings us here. You described it very adeptly, and, and it's not lost on Denise and I, the trust and confidence, and frankly, for us as a family, it's, it's an absolute blessing to come back to Hawaii. You know, a quick story, there, there's, a, there's a young lieutenant and his not yet fiance that looked at those mountains that were very well described this morning, looked at those mountains one day, you know, on a date when she was visiting and thought, you know, if we could get a set of orders back here, what a day that would be. And we pursued those orders for more than 30 years <laughs> until I finally became the guy that cut the orders and somehow convinced the commandant that maybe that would be a good idea. Right, that, that may, they might get the orders back here, and it is absolutely a blessing to be back. You know, the, the family, the ohana, the, the, all the spirit that comes with it, I want to say thank you. Bill rightfully recognized the, the fellow component commanders. Um, Admiral Paparo joining the team. Right, right, it, is, it is inspiring to be a part, and I, I look forward to not just the professional collaboration, but the, the personal camaraderie that, that some of us already share from time in a, in a lot of dirt. Uh, prior to getting here, so it's an honor to join the team. There are a number, I'm, I'm looking at some of them, there are a number of folks that are listening, have been here in the last few days, that are from all the partner nations, allies that, that I know around the, around the theater are listening. Thank you for making the effort to be here. It means more than you know. That there's there's um, fighting alongside, training alongside, preparing alongside, and then there's the friendships and the relationships that enable it all. And so traveling all these distances to be here, all that you've done to come recognize Bill and Sue Journey as they retire, but also to acknowledge the contributions at Marine Forces Fleet, Marine Forces Pacific. Thank you all for being here. And acknowledgement as well, Bill, you mentioned it, but to, to the base and to the community, there's a number of community leaders, congressional representatives, uh, local elected officials, that this is, you know, back to the opening remarks, this is a community, a, a very special community. There are a few places in our military career that spanned a few decades where you there's a lot of places where you live. There's a few places where you feel like you're part of the community. This has been one of them for us. And so it, it is thrilling to come back here. And so thanks for all that you do in support of, of all uniformed service, it's certainly in our case for, for Marines and their families. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, for, for the folks that, that put this together, Sergeant Major Cook said to me, we, we rolled in here you know, late last week. I see him running off on his vehicle, going by temp lodging. I'm like, man, this guy's already screwing off. The former commander hasn't even left. I'm like, where are you going? Like, I'm, I'm, going to watch, I'm going to watch these Marines get ready for this ceremony. That's what they've been putting into it. And for the Marines out there, I want to tell you, right, there's a lot of folks around the world looking at this right now, and they wonder, does this stuff just happen? I mean, your performance today, your resilience at this moment is an example of the exacting precision and discipline that you talked about. Both of you talked about it. But Admiral Paparo, you, you had mentioned it. That's exactly what it's about. And so I, I appreciate this is an operation and you're performing it with, with the precision that we expect as United States Marines. The, the, there are a number of friends, and I'm not going to go by names at all, but there are a number of friends either online or here. I, I'll tell you, they go from our BGSOC class, sitting over here representing a number of commands and deputy commandants, our BGSOC class, which is you know when you get started, to, to a, a funny little group of Marines in New York City called the Retired Retired Old Marines Eating Out, the Romeo of New York. And, and they came from, from a long way away. They've been supporters for a long time. And I just want to say to, to all of them, you know, whether they're listening or they're here, thanks for all your support over many, many years. Because you don't, no, no family gets here alone. And, 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 and that's, just, that's just the truth. That, that's the way it is, right? And speaking of no family getting here alone, I mean, t today is certainly about the change of command, but for Fleet Marine Forces Pacific, but for Bill and Sue Journey, uh, you, you mentioned it. You know, for a couple, for a couple majors at least. I mean, I think we met before that. But for a couple majors walking the streets of America, looking for young men and women who, you know, might be convinced to join the United States Marine Corps, and you know, say to their their 18-year-old soon-to-be bride, "Come with me, see the world." Right? We, we we did all right in those days. We shared some dirt in Iraq, and we shared Marines that shared some dirt and paid for it with their lives, and 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 so here we are today. And and none of you would be surprised to know the quality of the chain of the turnover that we got. Yes, there was golf last Saturday morning and, th and that's an important part of it, but there was more than golf, right? Right down to the exacting details that went until yesterday afternoon, right up until the comment I got here. I mean, every single piece of it has been, you know, exactly what you'd expect from Bill and Sue journey. And, and so, so thank you for, thank you for the turnover. Thanks for decades of serving alongside. Thanks for all the Marines you've touched and change and influence, and, and you recognize a couple of mentors that we have in common. What I would say, that, that same guy, Dunford, 
would, would you know, if you were here in the moment, say, uh, uh, the one thing I know, the biggest impact you can have is making a difference. Bill and Sue Journey made a difference, 100%. The, um, to the Marines and, you know, to all that organized this and to the Marines that performed in it, uh, the expectations have been spoken of already. Uh, you know, the expectation is that we know and understand what our standards are. And as General Journey alluded to them, that we seek to exceed them in every single instance and every single occasion. And so there's a lot of adages. You should inspect what you expect. And, you know, you should set expectations and lead from the front by example. That's what you should expect of me. You should expect me to be out front ensuring that you have what you need and that you're taken care of so that we can achieve the things in support of our partners and allies, so we can do the things that are required to prevail, that are, that are you know, expected of us as, as individuals and as a group. So know those standards and exceed those standards at every occasion. And, and finally, you know, I, I don't want to get out of here without recognizing the contributions of my own family. Right? Denise and, and a number of the friends represent a, a whole host of them. Part, most of them have been part of getting us here in the first place, right? They're, they're a kid, our daughter, who was up until almost midnight last night shipping a truck that should have left last Tuesday when we were still there but didn't, and she made sure it got here, and it's on its way to, a, to an in-law and a mother who helped move us again. Yeah, you know, even at this point in our life, our parents help us move uh, to this very day. So, so it, takes a, it takes a family, it takes a community. Um, again, I, I just want to close with a simple thank you to the entire FMF, FMF PAC, MAR4 PAC team. The, the experience this week has been, has been um, inspiring and, and also eye-opening at the same time. And when you're at Headquarters Marine Corps, you think you have an appreciation for all that's being done and what's going into making it happen. And you get here and you spend a couple days sitting with this crowd and, and, and not, just, not just sitting in briefs, but talking to them on the sidelines, and it's a different feeling. And so I, am, I stand before you humbled by the opportunity, humbled by the blessing, but also committed to taking, you, taking care of you and your families. Be you a civilian Marine, a, a sailor, or a Marine on the staff, taking care of you and supporting you and your families to ensure that you can do what we have to do each and every day. Meet those expectations and exceed those standards. So thank you all. God bless the journeys in their travels. Thank you, and, and thanks for your support of Marine Forces Pacific. God bless us all, and Semper Fidelis. Ladies and gentlemen, Lays are now being presented to Mrs. Journey for her committed support of her husband's career, as well as to the Marines, sailors, and civilians of Mar 4 Pack over the course of their tour. Lays are also being presented to Mrs. Glenn as a welcome to the Mar 4 Pack family. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the commander, United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific, Lieutenant General Glenn.
At this time, all former commanders of U.S. Marine Corps Forces Pacific are invited to join the commander in the reviewing area. Ladies and gentlemen, you are reminded to rise and salute as the colors pass before you. You may be seated once they have passed. Troops for today's parade is Colonel Eduardo C. Batanga II. The United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific Band is under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer 5, Andres G. Navarro. The drum major is Gunnery Sergeant James D. Mathis. Commanding Officer of Headquarters and Service Battalion, Colonel Mark F. Schaefer. <laughs> Representing Headquarters Company, Captain Tyler Ashton. <laughs> Representing One Marine Expeditionary Force, Colonel Robert E. Shuford. Representing 1st Marine Division, Captain Reed A. Ciano. <laughs> Representing 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing, Captain William P. Taylor. <laughs> Representing 1st first, first Marine Logistics Group, Captain Benjamin Olson. The U.S. Marine Corps Forces Pacific Color Sergeant is Sergeant Daniel A. Cardillo. Representing 3 Marine Expeditionary Force, Colonel Cindy Blair. Representing 3rd Marine Division, Captain Alexander Dragan. Representing 1st Marine Aircraft Wing, Captain Dave Estes. <laughs> Representing 3rd Marine Logistics Group, Captain Scott Ambridge.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's parade. On behalf of the Commandant, officers, and Marines and sailors,